This video is going to discuss the rule on summary procedure, but the summary procedure for criminal cases. Recall the purpose. The purpose is to achieve an expeditious and inexpensive determination of cases that is under the rule on summary procedure. Recall also the applicability. The rule shall govern the summary procedure in the metropolitan trial courts, municipal trial courts in cities, municipal trial courts, and municipal circuit trial courts. We go now to the procedure, the summary procedure for criminal cases. Take note ha, nasa criminal cases na tayo, tapos na yung civil cases. And if you are new to my channel, just go to the playlist nasa Remedia Law. So we start with the filing, filing ng ano? Filing ng complaint or information that is very clear according to your section 11, the filing of criminal cases shall be either by complaint or by information. And if you are in metropolitan Manila and in chartered cities, criminal, case, criminal cases shall be commenced only by information except when the offense cannot be prosecuted the official. What is the requirement if you are going to file a complaint? The complaint shall be accompanied by the affidavits of the complainants and also the affidavits of his witnesses. And if this requirement is not complied with within five days from the date of filing, the case may be dismissed. How about your information? What is the requirement? It's the same. The information shall be accompanied by the affidavits also of the complainants and of his witnesses. And if the requirement is not complied with within five days from date of filing, the case may be dismissed. After filing of the complaint or information, what is the next step? The court will determine if the case falls under summary procedure. That is very clear according to your section 2. Upon the filing of a criminal action, the court shall issue an order declaring whether or not the case shall be governed by the rule on summary procedure. And if there is a patently erroneous determination, to avoid the application of the rule, then that is a ground for disciplinary action. But ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Although Section 2 states that patently erroneous determination to avoid the application of the rule on summary procedure is a ground for disciplinary action, it does not mean, however, that Section 2 applies only where the failure to apply the rule on summary procedure is deliberate or malicious. Bakit? Because you go back again to the purpose. Kaya pa ulit ulit natin yung purpose. The purpose of the law is inexpensive or and expeditious. The policy of the law is to provide for the expeditious and summary disposition of cases. And the only guarantee that the purpose or the policy of the law will be fully utilized is to require judges upon the filing of the case to make the determination of the applicability of the rule on summary procedure. How will the court determine if the case falls under summary procedure? Madali lang. All the court needs to do is go to Section 1. For criminal cases, Lahat ng violations ng traffic laws, rules and regulations, violations of the rental law, violations of the municipal ordinances, violations of city ordinances, violations of Batas Pambansa bilang 22. That is according to the amendment to the rule on summary procedure of criminal cases to include within its coverage violations of BP bilang 22 otherwise known as the bouncing checks law. And all other criminal cases where the penalty prescribed by law for the offense charged is imprisonment not exceeding 6 months or a fine not exceeding 1,000 pesos or both irrespective of other imposable penalties, accessory or otherwise or of the civil liability arising therefrom. And if it is an offense involving damage to property through criminal negligence, the rule shall govern where the imposable fine does not exceed 10,000 pesos. Kailan naman hindi nag-a-apply, this rule shall not apply to a criminal case 
where the offense charge is necessarily related to another criminal case but that criminal case is subject to the ordinary procedure. For exam question, Edison here was charged with the crime of less serious physical injuries in the Metropolitan Trial Court of Manila. Under the RPC, the penalty prescribed for this offense is arresto mayor. The information alleged that the offended party suffered actual damages in the amount of 220,000 pesos. Instead of submitting his counter affidavits, itong si Edison, he filed a motion to quash contending that the court had no jurisdiction over the case since the amount claimed as damages exceeds the jurisdictional limit of the trial court in civil cases. Question, if you were the judge trying the case, what would you do with the motion filed? Another question, how would you dispose of the question of jurisdiction raised in the said motion? Let's go back to the facts. Ano ang crime that charge? The crime is less serious physical injuries. What is the penalty? The penalty is arresto mayor. What is the duration of arresto mayor? That is one month and one day to six months. Do you apply, therefore, the rule on summary procedure? Answer is yes. Meron bang jurisdiction si MPC? Answer is also yes. Bakit? Because if you read section 1, ano ang nakasulat? All other criminal cases where the penalty prescribed by law for the offense charge is imprisonment not exceeding 6 months irrespective of the civil liability arising therefrom. After the court determines that the case is under the rule on summary, uh, summary procedure, then what is the next step? You have to make a distinction. Bakit? Because when the case is uh, commenced through a complaint, then the court can dismiss the case outright. That is very clear according to your section 12. On the basis of the complaint and the affidavits and evidence, the court may dismiss the case outright for being patently without basis or merit and order the release of the accused if he is in custody. Paano naman kung nakita ni judge na hindi naman pala gawa-gawa yung kwento? What is his option? Then, in that case, the court will issue an order which shall require the accused to submit his counter affidavit. How about if it is an information? If the case is commenced through an information, then the court will issue an order which shall require the accused to submit his counter affidavit. Yan ang sinasabi ng Section 12, Letter B. When the case is commenced by information or it is not dismissed, the court shall issue an order together with the copies of the affidavits and other evidence submitted by the prosecution and that order will require the accused to submit his counter affidavit and the affidavits of his witnesses as well as any evidence. And the prosecution may reply, may file a reply affidavits within 10 days after the receipt of the counter affidavits of the defense. After this, what is the next step? The court can order the dismissal of the case or set the case for arraignment. When can the court order the dismissal of the case? Section 13 has the answer. Should the court, upon a consideration of the complaint or information and the affidavit submitted by both parties, the court finds no cause or ground to hold the accused for trial, then it can order the dismissal of the case. Otherwise, the court shall set the case for arraignment and trial. And if the accused is in custody for the crime charge, he shall be immediately arraigned. And if he enters a plea of guilty, then he shall be sentenced. After arraignment, what is the next step? There will be a preliminary conference that is very clear according to your section 14. Before conducting the trial, the court shall call the parties to a preliminary conference. 
Ano ba ang nangyayari sa preliminary conference? Pag-uusapan ang stipulation of facts, the propriety of allowing the accused to enter a plea of guilty to a lesser offense, and other matters in order to clarify the issue and ensure a, dis a speedy disposition of the case. But just take note, since this is a criminal case, no admission by the accused shall be used against him unless that admission is reduced into writing and signed by the accused and his counsel. And if the accused refuses to stipulate or fails to stipulate, that will not prejudice the accused. After preliminary conference is the trial. At the trial, yung mga affidavits na sinabmit ng mga parties that is considered the direct testimony that is in lieu of the direct testimonies of the witnesses who executed the same. And the witnesses who testified may be subjected to cross-examination, redirect examination, or recross-examination. But how about if the affiant failed to testify? What will be the effect? Then, should the affiant fail to testify, masasayang ang affidavit because it will not be considered as a competent evidence for the party presenting that affidavit. But si adverse party, he can utilize that affidavit for any admissible purpose. After trial, what comes next? That is judgment. Section 17, where a trial has been conducted, the court shall promulgate the judgment not later than 30 days after the termination of trial. Before we proceed, let's take a look at the difference of the summary procedure in criminal cases and in civil cases. Ano ang napansin nyo sa criminal case merong trial? After preliminary conference and before the rendition of the judgment, there is a trial. Therefore, we can say that trial is necessary in criminal cases covered by the rules on summary procedure. How about in civil cases? Meron din bang trial? Answer is, there is no trial involved. Pag binalikan natin yung flowchart, after preliminary conference, what happens next? The court will issue an order of the matters taken in the preliminary conference. That is your record of preliminary conference. And after that is the parties will now submit their affidavits and position papers. Therefore, hearing is no longer conducted in civil cases. Instead of that hearing, parties are required to, to submit their position papers as stated in your section 9. Kaya tandaan ha, pag civil case, walang trial involved. Section 16, very important provision, the court shall not order the arrest of the accused except for his failure to appear whenever required and release of the person arrested is either by bail or recognizance. 2012 Bart Question MCQ in a criminal case for violation of a city ordinance, the court may issue a warrant of arrest. Choices are letter A, for failure of the accused to submit his counter affidavit. Choice B, after finding probable cause against the accused. Letter C, for failure of the accused to post bail. And choice D is for his non-appearance in court whenever required. Answer is letter D. The criminal case for, a viola for violation of a city ordinance is governed by the rules on summary procedure. And under the said rule, section 16, the court shall not order the arrest of the accused except for his failure to appear whenever required. Another bar exam question and information for slight physical injuries was filed against Jego. The judge directed Diego to appear and submit counter affidavits and those of his witnesses on September 12th. But Diego failed to appear on September 12th. Thereafter, the judge rendered judgment convicting Diego of the offense charge based on the affidavit submitted by the complainant. Diego contends that this judgment is a nullity. Is Diego correct? Answer is yes. Diego is correct. Bakit? Because the, the crime charge is slight physical injuries. 
Therefore, the rule that will govern is the rule on summary procedure. And ano ang sabi natin? The general rule in the rule on summary procedure is you cannot issue a warrant of arrest except if there is a failure on the part of the accused to appear whenever required. Ito ang nangyari kay Diego. Pinapa-appear noong September 12, hindi pumunta. Therefore, the court should have issued a warrant of arrest in order to acquire jurisdiction over the person of Diego. And once he acquires jurisdiction over the person of Diego, then the court should set the case for arraignment and if Diego will, uh, will plea not guilty, if, and if his plea is not guilty, then you go to trial and then you render judgment. Or if his plea is guilty, then you render judgment. You cannot render judgment based only on the affidavits submitted by the complainant. Let's recall section 19 that is your prohibited pleadings and motions. So for your criminal case, Take note that your motion to quash the complaint or information is a prohibited motion. But if your ground is lack of jurisdiction over the subject matter or failure to refer the case to the barangay conciliation, then you can file a motion to quash the complaint or information. Ang hindi natin naka nasama sa discussion is yung memoranda. Take note ha, memoranda is a prohibited pleading. Another bar exam question, the accused here was charged with the offense of slight physical injuries. So the court issued an order declaring that the case shall be governed by the rule on summary procedure. Ano ang ginawa ni accused? He filed a motion to quash. The ground is the officer who filed the information had no authority to do so. The MTC denied the motion to quash. The ground is, it is a prohibited motion. Ano ang ginawa ni accused? Umakyat ng RTC. He filed a petition for certiorari, questioning or assailing and seeking the nullification of the denial of the M MTC of his motion to quash. Ano ang ginawa ni RTC? It issued an order denying due course to the certiorari petition on the ground that it is not allowed by the rule on summary procedure. The accused filed a motion for reconsideration of the order but the RTC denied the motion for reconsideration on the ground that the same is also a prohibited motion under the rule on summary procedure. Question. Were the orders of the RTC in denying the petition for certiorari as well as the motion for reconsideration correct? Answer is yes. Bakit? Because what did we say again? When can you file a motion to quash the complaint or information? If your ground is lack of jurisdiction over the subject matter or failure to refer the case to the barangay conciliation, then you can file a motion to quash. That is allowed. That is no longer considered a prohibited motion. But can you file a petition for certiorari against any interlocutory order? In our problem, ano ang ginawa ni accused? Umakyat na RTC dahil ang kanyang motion to quash is na deny. Can he do that? Answer is no. He cannot file a petition for certiorari because the denial of his motion to quash is an interlocutory order. Therefore, the petition for certiorari filed in the RTC is a prohibited pleading. But how about the motion for reconsideration filed by the accused in the RTC? What did we say? Kung ang kaso is nasa RTC na, then the rule on summary procedure no longer applies. Ang mag-a-apply na is yung ordinary procedure. But since your premise, since your petition for certiorari is a prohibited pleading, then you filed a motion for reconsideration based on that prohibited pleading. Therefore, the RTC is also correct in denying that motion for reconsideration.
If your motion to quash is denied, what is your remedy? Your remedy accused is to enter into a plea, go to trial, and if the decision is still adverse, you reiterate that on appeal from final judgment and then you assign that as an error, the denial of your motion to quash. Take note ha, that your denial of motion to quash is an interlocutory order. Therefore, since it is an interlocutory order, it is not appealable. That is very clear according to your Rule 41, Section 1C. An appeal from an interlocutory order is not allowed. But can you file Rule 65, a petition for certiorari? Ang sabi nga natin, sa Rule on Summary Procedure, your petition for certiorari against any interlocutory order is a prohibited pleading. That is very clear according to your Section 19 of the Rule on Summary Procedure. But how about in an ordinary procedure? Can you file a petition for certiorari? Answer is, general rule, hindi pwede. General rule ang pinag-uusapan muna natin. Hindi pwede kasi Rule 65 will only come in if there is no appeal or other adequate, plain, and speedy remedy. In the case of your denial, in the case of denial of your motion to quash, there is a plain and speedy remedy. And what is that plain and speedy remedy? That is to proceed to trial. But we are talking of a general rule. Therefore, pag may general rule, mayroong exceptions. What is, ya, what is the exception? If there is a compelling reason. According to the Supreme Court, what are the instances specifically pertaining to denials of motion to quash that could be used as a ground for your Rule 65? Number one is, when the court issued the order without jurisdiction or in excess of jurisdiction or with grave abuse of discretion or when that interlocutory order is patently erroneous and the remedy of appeal would not afford adequate and expeditious relief in the interest of a more enlightened and substantial justice to promote public welfare and policy and last is when the case have attracted nationwide attention making it essential to proceed with dispatch in the consideration thereof therefore you can now file a rule 65 but take note ha this is an exception rather than the general rule let's go to section 20 affidavits ilang beses natin narinig si affidavit but what is the requirement of the rule that affidavit must state only facts of direct personal knowledge of the affiant, which are admissible in evidence and shall show their competence to testify to the matters stated in affidavit? Bakit? Because if there would be a violation, then the party or the counsel who submitted that affidavit will be subjected to a disciplinary action and it shall be a ground to expunge the inadmissible affidavit or portion thereof from the record. So bar question, in what civil cases is the summary procedure applicable? And in what criminal cases is the summary procedure applicable? This is the answer. This is your section 1. Let's go to this case of Habiliana. Kasi maganda ito sa ating discussion. Take note first that all of the personalities involved in this case are all lawyers. Lahat sila ay abogado. Yung complainants nagkatrabaho sa public attorney's office while Habiliana, the respondent, is a judge. Ano ang chinarge kay Habiliana? Gross ignorance of the law. According to the complainants, Judge Habiliana was grossly ignorant of the revised rule on summary procedure citing several occasions as example number one itong si respondent judge habiliana he issued a warrant of arrest after the filing of the criminal case for malicious mischief letter b judge habiliana he did not grant the motion to dismiss for non-compliance with the barangay conciliation because according to judge habiliana 
that motion is a prohibited reading. Ano pa ang ginawa ni Judge Habiliana? He refused to dismiss the complaint outright even when the same was patently without basis or merit since the affidavits of the complainant and the witnesses submitted are all her say evidence. And last is, instead of applying the revised rule on summary procedure, ano ang ginawa ni Judge Habiliana? He conducted a preliminary examination and preliminary investigation in accordance with the rule on criminal procedure. Then he set the case for arraignment and trial, pre-trial, despite confirming that the complainant and the witnesses had no personal knowledge of the material facts alleged in their affidavits. Isa-isahin natin yung mga issues raised by the complainant para makita natin saan yung pagkakamali ni Judge Aguiliana. First, he issued a warrant of arrest after the filing of the criminal case for malicious mischief. So the crime here is malicious mischief. What is the penalty for malicious mischief? That is arresto mayor in its medium and maximum period. And what is the duration of that arresto mayor? That is two months and one day up to six months. Kailan papasok si summary procedure? According to your article, uh, according to number five, section one, all other criminal cases where the penalty prescribed by law for the offense charged is imprisonment not exceeding six months, pasok si summary procedure. So in the case of malicious mischief, ang rule na magagavern is, uh, is summary procedure. But what did we say in summary procedure? The court will not issue a warrant of arrest. Kailan lang siya pwedeng mag-issue ng warrant of arrest? Section 16, the court shall not order the arrest of the accused except for failure of that accused to appear whenever required. Therefore, mali si Judge Habiliana that he issued a warrant of arrest after the filing of the criminal case for malicious mischief. Second issue, Judge Habiliana did not grant the motion to quash for non-compliance with the Barangay Conciliation because according to Judge Habiliana, that motion is a prohibited pleading. So is Judge Habiliana correct? Answer is definitely no. Because according to your section 19, while motion to quash is a prohibited motion, but since the ground is failure to comply with the Barangay Conciliation, then that is an exception that is allowed. And ano ang nangyayari if there is a failure to comply with the Barangay Conciliation? According to Section 18, the case shall be dismissed, but the nature of the dismissal is without prejudice. So can you refile? Answer is yes. But you can revive only after such requirement shall have been complied with. And this provision shall not apply to criminal cases where the accused was arrested without a warrant. Third issue, Judge Habiliana refused to dismiss the complaint outright. Can Judge Habiliana dismiss the complaint outright? Answer is yes. That is very clear according to your section 12. The court may dismiss the case outright for being patently without basis or merit. And what is the requirement again for your affidavits? It must be of direct personal knowledge. Hindi pwedeng her say. Let's go to the last issue. Judge Javiliana did not apply the rule on summary procedure. Instead, he conducted a preliminary examination and preliminary investigation in accordance with the rule on criminal procedure. So, is he correct? Answer is definitely no. Take note ha, yung case dito is malicious mischief. Therefore, the revised rule on summary procedure applies. And in that rule on summary procedure, it does not provide for a preliminary investigation prior to the filing of a criminal case. What is the flow again? Ito, yung nabanggit na natin kanina. And what can you recall 
kailan lang nagkakaroon ng preliminary investigation according to Section 1, Rule 112, it only requires that a preliminary investigation is conducted before the filing of a complaint or information for an offense where the penalty prescribed by law is at least four years, two months, and one day without regard to the fine. Let me just give you the features of the summary procedure para during the pre-week kung ngarag na ang daming binasa, ito na lang ang recall nyo. First is, the rule prohibits the filing of certain motions and pleadings to accomplish its objective. Again, you go back, what is the purpose? The purpose is to achieve an expeditious and inexpensive determination of the case without regard to technical rules. And then you recall your section 19 because nandyan ang listahan ng mga prohibited pleadings and motions. Another feature is the judge is empowered to dismiss the case outright. For your civil case, according to your section 4, the court may dismiss the case outright on any of the grounds apparent for the dismissal of a civil action. How about for your criminal case? Pwede ba ding i-dismiss ng judge outright? Answer is yes. If commenced by complaint according to Section 12, the court may dismiss the case outright for being patently without basis or merit. Another feature is the submission of affidavits in lieu of direct testimony of witnesses and the cross-examination made on the basis of such affidavit on the day of the trial. That is very clear according to your section 15. At the trial, the affidavit submitted shall be considered as the direct testimonies of the witnesses who executed the same. And the witnesses who testified may be subjected to cross-examination redirect or recross examination another feature is the submission of position papers together with the affidavits section 9 parties are required to submit the affidavits of their witnesses and other evidence together with their position paper which will set forth the law and the facts relied upon by them kung sa ordinary procedure usually pinapasubmit ang memorandum of arguments at the end of the trial, here you will be submitting your position, pa your position paper before the rendition of judgment. And take note ha, under section 19, letter F, your memoranda is a prohibited reading. Another feature of the rule on summary procedure is that there is no extension of period. That is very clear according to your section 19, letter E. Walang qualification. Lahat ng motion for extension of time to file pleadings, affidavits, or any other paper is considered a prohibited motion. Is this the same in your ordinary procedure? Answer is no. Kasi sa ordinary procedure, allowed ka to file a motion for extension to file an answer one time. Last feature is that the limited amount of award for attorney's fees. What can you recall in Section 1? For cases of forcible entry and unlawful detainer, if you are going to award attorney's fees, the same shall not exceed the amount of 20,000 pesos. And if you go to your Section 6, if there is a failure on the part of the defendant to answer the complaint, then the court can render judgment. But the court, in its discretion, it can reduce the amount of attorney's fees claimed for being excessive or otherwise unconscionable. So this is the summary of what we just discussed, the seven features of the rule on summary procedure.